Lisa. I have my last uh, page for this series out of this kit. I may do some other things with the kit later on, but for right now I'm going to do three videos. And this one is another two-pager. It would be a great use of 4x6 photos. Now this particular 4x6 is two 3x4s and that I am going to split across the page. Um, but if, you, if it's, you're comfortable with splitting your 4x6s over the page, this would be a good arrangement for doing so because this is, could also be a regular 4x6. It's probably not going to have a lot of designer paper though. What I'm looking to do here is to do some border strips um, here, and I could do those with designer paper. A design in this corner, a larger design up here, the title, and the journaling. I haven't done up an official sketch. I will do one uh, later on for the page, but I have this time frame in my workroom or in my uh, scrap area where the sun doesn't flood my my uh, table from uh, in the early morning and late afternoons, but from about 11 in the morning to about 1, I can't film. So I, I get too much sun and it doesn't work. So I needed to get this done. I didn't have time to, to get the sketch created ahead of time. But you kind of get the idea of where we're going with this uh, page. There were a couple of other photos that I elected not to put on this one because they were more for the Japanese garden. Um, so I'm, I'm going to do more pages for this particular place that we went. It was so beautiful. We loved it so much. I am going to work probably with some border stickers, so we'll pull those out. I'm not sure I'm going to use any paper. If this page were part of a group that's, that would be together with all the other pages in the same album, I'd probably use a stripe because I've used a stripe on the other pages and do some consistency with that one. Or the, I still might use this one. This one matches the colors really well. Uh, but I don't have to do that because I'm not really having to tie these things together. So I don't think this is going to be one that has a lot of uh, designer paper to it. I might use the stamp which I have mislaid at the moment, but there is a stamp that goes with this, so we may use that. Um, this corner down here, I'd like to use this design, and I'm going to put it right down here in the corner, and I probably will layer something on top of it, so we'll pull this flare back out. I originally had this to go with this page, but I don't know, it may be a little too wide. I don't think I want to play up the pinks. I want to play up more the green and the natural stuff. So we'll leave some of these green trims out. Pretty. Put that one out. Okay, so. Okay, so those are the things that I'm going to have out here handy as we work. Oh, here's my stamp. So I may want to do something with the stamp. I really want to put something large up here, and I was thinking about a round stenciled thing, but I don't know if there's a way I can work this stamp into a design up here. So I'm going to think about that a little bit um, as we get going on here. I have a cardstock background to sort of unite the pages and keep it really neutral. I really want my photos with the flowers and stuff to pop. I took a lot of close-ups uh, here, and I don't do that very much. I don't remember to do that very much. So um, I want to make sure those really show up. For my title, I want to use the phrase, One Beautiful Backyard, because these gardens were essentially started as somebody's backyard. I think there's about 200 acres of them. Um, and they're just gorgeous. And um, I'm going to do, you know, rather a long title. So I'm going to use the silhouette to cut this. And I'm in the silhouette software. I'm going to type in the text. One beautiful backyard. Okay. Now let's I'm clicking away and I'm going to click again to select the text and I'm going over to my library. The font I'd like to use is the beautiful dreamer font, which is really pretty because it has all these swirls and things and I think that kind of goes with what we're, we're doing here. I do want to make this quite a bit bigger. And I want them to be welded together because you can see how these letters overlap. Let's zoom in here a little bit more. And I also, I think that they can be put together a little bit more. So first step we're going to do is select them, right click and weld. And that puts some things together, but there's still some separate sections here. What I'd like to do though is take backyard and I'm just going to select all of it 
right click and group it. I don't have to do that, but that keeps it together so I don't lose any pieces as I'm dragging this along because what I want to do is place this. I'm trying to get it so that it will kind of overlap with some of the other words here with the um, beautiful word so that when I weld again, I'll get more of these things together in one piece. Now I want to, I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard so I can have it welded but not overly, just, you know, just sort of things are just touching here. All right, now I think I have all of that and we'll go ahead and select everything again. Right click and weld. And now I have more things put together. I still have the B here as separate. In fact, I could make it a little larger if I wanted to. And I could weld it in, but I think that's going to be big enough. And this one, I think I'm going to do it a little bit bigger too, just for a little bit more emphasis. Okay. And the word one is all by itself. That's fine. I can handle that. Um, but this you know, not only makes an interesting look to have everything together, but it also makes it a lot easier to piece. So now I'm ready to go ahead and cut this out. So in addition to cutting out those words, I also cut out this flower design, and we're going to use this as a stencil. So I'm putting some washi tape down here, and this is where we'll get to work with our stamp. And I think I want to do some kind of sort of tone on tone, maybe a little bit darker color here. This is the pool party color and it doesn't look like it's coming out so I'm testing it but you can't really see it very well on the screen but it does come out. You do get to see the design. A little extra pressing and you get a nice design there. And I will probably need to add some layers to it but this is a good start. And I picked out a piece of um, the flare, and I'm deciding on a stencil. And I do make a little mistake here. <laughs> You're going to see this. Now mark the center so I'd know where to, to put the stencil. That was good. But I'm using Distress Paints. It's been a while since I stenciled with Distress Paints. I use them a lot on my jelly plate now, and I've wasn't thinking about how thin they are. And when you're working with a stencil with Distress Paints, you really need to to put very, very little on your brush, and I put too much, and I made a mess. And I'm working on my background paper here, and I don't have a lot. I think I have a little extra of this cardstock, but um, I should just turn the paper over. I don't know. No, actually, this cardstock doesn't have a pr color on the other side, so I couldn't do that. So anyway, I'm trying to come up with some way to cover that, and then I messed up my filming, and you didn't get to see what I did. What I ended up doing was put a couple of stickers over the top, and sort of brushed a little bit of that green out there and I got a really pretty design. You can still see some of the stamping. Um, it's just not, of course, what I had started out to do, but it worked. So I covered up my mess, essentially. Now we're kind of laying things out. I did most of this page in one day. I just got interrupted a lot while I was trying to work on it. We'll use that as an excuse. I don't know. Might have happened anyway, even if I hadn't gotten interrupted. All right, taking some of these strips, and I'm going to trim them down a little bit. And I'm trying, I'm trimming off some off the edge because I want to try to match the colors going across there, even though they will be. You know, my album, they'll be divided by the rings. I switched several years ago from the Creative Memory style strap albums to um, American Craft style with the D-rings. And I really like that because I like being able to put pages in in whatever order works for me because I just don't scrap chronologically anymore. This particular layout is from some September of 2014 was when these photos were taken and I did a one the, the last video I done was from earlier this year so I just kind of do whatever I'm in the mood for what goes with the papers I have out that kind of thing all right so we've sort of formed an L there with our paper and I am going to use a sticker I'm not going to have enough of it to go of course all the way across but we'll make that work out for us. 
What we're going to do with this sticker is tuck it in under the embellishment and have it go as far as it can. And then we'll just match it up and let it go the rest of the way over. Sort of weighting that lower right hand corner to balance the embellishment over on the other side. And I'm looking for some trim here, but I found that green, because it's velvet, to be kind of a little heavy. The other tr trim was a little bit wide, and I just ended up not using any of those. I thought I would, but I didn't uh, end up using them. So we're going to use some more flare. This time the basic gray flare. That other flare is my mind's eye. And I'm ready to start gluing some stuff down here. I'm going to uh, attach the rest of the photos off camera. I do feel like I need one more embellishment, so I found uh, that heart, and I kind of liked that. Now I'm gluing my um, lettering on here with the gel pen. And I got interrupted on this one too. And I had to, so I had to work real quickly. But I did get it straight. The only thing I did was I got one of the B's ups, backwards and upside down. It sounds like that wouldn't work, but it did, it did. And I fixed it by this point. So you can't see that. I was able to take it off and, and glue it back on properly doesn't always work, but fortunately it did. Now, what I felt like down there at the bottom is that that sticker, it had, you know, it looks like um, fabric you know, that swags. I used to make window treatments, so it looks like little swags down there. And I felt like it needed something to sort of hold them up, something little, um, if you were doing swags on a window and you didn't have a board to attach them to, you'd have little uh, some drapery hardware to, to attach them to, and that's kind of what I'm going for here, is my hardware is going to be these enamel dots. Okay, I have this layout done, and the sketch for this will be a next year sketchbook for sure. It'll be a good one for 4 by 6s or if you want to do some of the 3 by 4s I've had several requests to do a video or instructions on how I put two photos together on a um, on a one 4 by 6 I use Photoshop Elements. I have a new version of Elements, uh, version 13, that I just purchased just said was on version 9 for years and years um, and I need to get more comfortable with the steps uh, I can do it but I, I, I want to be real comfortable and real clean when I go through the process so uh, as soon as I get time to do that I will get a video up on how to do that process uh, but for now let's take a look at this page I like my little um, uh, enamel dots. I mainly like that I'm using them because I have this tendency to sort of save them and not really get them in use. But we did get to kind of, I had to do something sort of weird over here, but uh, we're still able to get an embellishment there. Love this font. Um, and I like how the border continues across the two pages, sort of brings everything together. And I know I, I did quite a bit of journaling here, but I, I'll do more journaling because I definitely want to do some more pages on this place that we went, Gibbs Gardens, north of Atlanta, about an hour north of the city. It is just phenomenal. Uh, it's a wonderful place to visit if you love gardens and you're um, anywhere in that area. So thank you. And Oh, and they're not open this time of the year, but in the, the starting in the spring and all the way through the fall. So thanks so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you will check out my other videos, and if you like this one, give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you subscribe. I would love to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and as I'm doing this, I'm in, I'm close. I've got a little over 100 that I need in the last couple of weeks of the year. So that's just a personal goal that I had, and I was really hoping uh, to get to that point. And I do appreciate all of you who have already been subscribing. Thanks so much.